Hello, geology students. Welcome once again to our Grade 10 Science Online Classroom. Today, we will continue our discussion on the processes involved in plate tectonics. In the previous video, you have learned about all the processes that happen along the different types of plate boundaries. These processes result to the formation of volcanic arcs, mountain belts, ocean ridges, and valleys. But not all processes and formations happen along the plate boundaries. Some volcanoes were formed in the middle of the plate, and this is because of the so-called hotspot. Hotspot is a fixed region in the upper mantle that is relatively hot compared to its surroundings. There is an upwelling and melting of the crust to form a volcanic feature. Take note of the different layers before we start discussing hotspot. Convection current causes hot, less dense material called mantle plume to ascend from deep in the mantle. This mantle plume bulges below the lithosphere causes the rocks to melt. This region is called the hot spot. Molten materials called magma push through the crust to form a volcanic feature. Lava continues to flow from the vent. However, Little spear moves because it is being pushed by other plates. As the little spear moves, the volcanic feature formed is carried with it away from the hot spot. Since the hot spot is stationary, new volcano is formed at the top of it. This oceanic crustal plate continues to move, while new volcanic feature continues to be formed at the top of the hot spot. A chain of extinct volcanoes will be formed over millions of years as the lithosphere continues to move across the hot spot. The age of the volcanic remains increases as their distance from the hot spot increases. Hot spot volcanoes have many distinct characteristics that distinguish them from other volcanoes formed along the plate boundaries. Most of the hotspot volcanoes are formed in an oceanic crust since this type of crust is thin. Unlike in subduction, the upwelling mantle is called mantle plume. Hotspot develops above this plume. This melts the lithosphere and generates basalt-rich magma. This means that the flowing lava from this eruption is less viscous. Low viscosity of lava results to less explosive eruptions and creates active shield volcanoes. These volcanoes are wide with shallow sloping side. In this figure, we will name the first volcano, Volcano A. Since lithospheric plates move, volcanoes move away from the hot spot, cool, and subside, producing older islands. In our figure, Volcano A becomes a dormant volcano as it moves with oceanic crustal plate away from the hot spot. The new active volcano we name Volcano B is formed at the top of this hotspot. Our lifetime is not enough to witness these plate movements, but if we will be comparing the age of the rocks found in these islands, we will notice that the farther the rocks from the most active volcano, the older these rocks are. After millions of years, there will be a trail of islands and seamounts which evidently have passed through the underlying mantle plume and hotspot. In this figure, Volcano C is at the top of the hot spot, that is why it is an active volcano. Volcano B is classified as dormant volcano since it has moved away from the supply of magma. Volcanologists will observe its activity until after 10,000 years of no eruption, it can be declared as an extinct volcano just like Volcano A. Unlike the volcanic island arc formed by the subduction process, Hotspot volcanoes are only active when they are at the top of the mantle plume. The best example of an oceanic hotspot is found in the islands of Hawaii. It is believed that the Hawaiian islands were formed by a hotspot lying underneath the Pacific plate. Next to these islands is a lineup of underwater islands and seamounts, but there are only five islands that are visible at the surface of the Pacific Ocean. As of today, the most active volcano in the world is found in the main Hawaiian island, 
the Mount Kilauea. This figure shows the seismicity in Hawaii from 2000 to 2018. This depicts that most of the earthquakes happened in the main and the largest island of Hawaii. This proves that this island is currently at the top of the hotspot where mantle plume continues to bulge underneath the lithosphere. Meanwhile, the preceding islands which were once at this spot are now unlikely to experience earthquake. Today, the concentration of these earthquake epicenters are found at the edge of the main island. Would this mean that this island will grow even larger? Or will a new hotspot volcano will emerge next to this island? Hotspot volcanoes can also be found in the continents. In the North American plate, there is a series of volcanoes across the southern state of Idaho which are believed to be formed by a hot spot. As of today, the Yellowstone caldera found in the borders of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho is said to be at the top of that hot spot. Unlike the less viscous basaltic magma, rhyolitic magma formed due to the melting of continental crust is thick and sticky, creating cinder cone volcanoes covered with rhyolite. Perhaps this portion of the western United States is the only part of the world where we can find all types of plate boundaries, including the hot spot. In summary, volcanoes that are not found along the boundaries of plates are said to be formed by a hot spot. As lithospheric plates move, hot spot volcanoes are displaced and became remnants, which help us understand plate tectonics better. Hot spot volcanoes differ in structure depending on which type of crust they were formed.